Okay, so I wanted to work a little bit more on this. I want to change the printf to write to a whole string instead of one character at a time calling put character that calls write. I want to call write once with a full string per printf call. And then ideally we can use control codes within that string to just write that directly through printf without needing a separate write call to set the cursor position and things or set colors. We can do that within the printf string with the control code or escape sequence and just make that a little bit simplified. Uh, before I do that, I do want to change the the control code for setting the foreground and background color because that is I haven't used it yet, obviously. But <laughs> so I haven't fully tested this. But these little one liners here aren't quite correct. Um, I want to subtract a minus ten if it's in hex. <laughs> if we just subtract a, it's just subtracting sixty five, and that's not really going to be right. We want to subtract fifty five instead because a is 65, and 65 minus 10 would be 55, and you would end up with 10. <laughs> 65 minus 55 would be 10. And f is 70, 70 minus 55 here. Uh, yeah, that would work better. I think before it would do 0 to 5, and we want to do 10 to 15, so that's the reason I'm, I needed to, add, needed to add that here. A little bit of a bug, but again, I haven't really tested this yet. Maybe we can do that on this little recording. We'll find out. So I want to check, or I want to change, standard I.O. file. And we can do this a couple ways. If we just want to write a whole string to write, and we know our string is going to be bounded within a certain size, we could just statically allocate. Um, by statically, I don't necessarily mean the keyword static, but I mean just having like a string here. And just have it be uh, however many characters, like 512 characters or so. And we fill in that string and call write. But if we want to allocate dynamically or we want to send like a giant string to write, then we would need to use like malloc, which is kind of what I ended up doing in a little bit of testing earlier. So I'm going to do that here. Um, my write variable I'm going to have be global because this worked better globally for whatever reason. You and AT, you have a character. Uh, it could be U and 8T though. Doesn't matter, I guess. I'm just going to call it right string or right buffer. It's a whole string. We'll call it a, a buffer, I guess. Right buffer. That's fine. And then I want to have a length for that buffer as well. We'll just call it length, I guess. That is, that's fine as well. Down here within printf, I'm just going to set those initialized. So length is going to be zero. And the right buffer, I want to malloc something, like a given, a given size. So I'm going to start off with a maximum size for a string of, I don't know, 256. That seems like big, big enough for most small strings. So we can do that there. But to use malloc, we probably want to include that stuff up here. So I'll do that. Actually, it's not there. It's in a C standard lib. We could include a malloc implementation, but I already did that. It's in standard lib, right? Malloc here. And yeah, I don't have to do these as two separate lines, actually. And I also don't want to hard code syscall numbers, so I can change that while I'm here as well. Might as well, since we're here. Syscall numbers. And get rid of that. And the three will change to syscall malloc. And the same thing for the 4 down here, which is probably covered. My face is covering that, so that's good. Same thing for this 4 down here for free. I'm going to make that syscall free. And we won't hard code the numbers, yay! And then these things uh, don't really need to be separated. This move EAX0 and the equal R pointer, I could do that in the output for the N80 software interrupt because that's going to be the output parameter anyway. If I want this as output, that's fine. I can do that. And that just, you know, makes it slightly shorter, but that's all right. I haven't done anything. Do we, we don't compile. That's good. UNAT from a void pointer. Yeah. Yeah, I probably want this to be a pointer to that. Yes, I'm casting malloc. That's not good, right? Although it's just a warning, it doesn't really... Oh, this needs to be a pointer, that's why. That's why. Yeah, I don't really want to cast malloc. I think that's a, a faux pas, right? Although it shouldn't matter too much, but okay. 
So we malloced Max. We're not doing anything yet. But we're mallocking Max. So as I go through this format string, I want to add things to this buffer instead of calling put C for everything every time. I'm, do, I'm just going to add to the buffer here. So I'm using length, or I'm going to use length as an index into this buffer to know where we're going to write to. So instead of putting the character here, I'm going to put it within the right buffer and increment the length. And that's kind of what this is going to look like for all of these. For printing the integer, I need to add it to the string, but that's within the function. So I'll do that within here. Instead of calling put C, we need to add it. That would equal buff I. Yeah, that should be all right. String I'm calling put S, that would need to change as well. That would equal star S, and we'll do S plus plus, okay. Although if you just call put S externally, then this wouldn't make sense, so maybe not. I include this file and other things and I just want to call put C or put S, I want to be able to use these functions like isolated, right? Adempotently, is that the word? I don't know, something like that. So maybe I can change the put S down here to work a little bit differently than the one up there and that would be fine. We would just need another thing here. Uh, this would equal this actually, let's do character pointer S equals this. We'll do that. So we'll just do the same code pretty much that I was going to do up there. Add to the buffer. And then for this, instead of calling put C, we'll do same thing there, but for a single character. This one we can just put the literal character into the buffer. <laughs> I was about to say we can do that and nothing else, but now we can just put it into the buffer here, see. And here we can do it twice for both of these. Okay. So we have all those things there. So what happens if we go along and we're adding to the length and we've overwritten, you know, however many, however much memory we have, that could be bad. We might silently fail, we might not do anything and just corrupt other memory. So I need a kind of a check for that. Like if length is greater than max here, although if we went through like a giant string and percent %s for some reason, maybe it's like a couple thousand character string or something, um, we'd need a way of increasing max every time. And I'm just gonna do a simple doubling of the maximum size and reallocate. So, but I'm gonna do that within a loop and not just a single statement in case for some reason it's greater than just two times the size. If it's greater than max, I'm going to allocate and move to a larger buffer for this. So we'll just do it by two. So the next one will be 512 and then 1024 and 2048, you know, etc. There's better allocation schemes, right, than just doubling, but I'm just going to do a simple doubling here. I'm also going to make a separate pointer for just a temp string or a temp buffer to malloc that new thing. And then I'm going to move stuff into there. I can use string copy, but I need to include that probably. Yeah. Include string.h. Okay. So I'm going to copy into this temp buffer my current one. So we'll copy into the larger buffer. And then we're not really going to need the smaller buffer anymore. So I can set that equal to the larger buffer, but that would still leave like a dangling pointer or something out there. So what I can do is free that. And we'll be all right. And that is what's standard live. Yeah. All right. Free smaller buffer as it's no longer needed. And that just, you know, helps get rid of one dangling pointer there. But we're allocating a new larger buffer for a larger max. I'm going to copy that into 
copy our current string that we're going to write into the larger buffer and then set it equal to that temp. So temp we don't need, and that'll get rid of, that'll sort of be erased outside of the scope anyway. And our write buffer will be pointing to the same thing, but a larger area. You may want to like mem set this stuff as well, if you want to make sure it's clear, but I think just writing to it is okay. Um, but the memory could be garbage, it could be anything, so um, we want to null terminate it because it's not going to guarantee to be pointing to zero or not. So um, one good thing about auto sort of post incrementing length for all of these for everything, including up here, which I forgot if I did or not, uh, length will be pointing at the current, you know, end of the buffer. So we can just set that equal to null and null terminate it pretty easily. But this should include everything from, you know, characters to strings to numbers, hex or deck, and here we go, put S. Yeah, that was one place I missed, so I'm glad I went back and looked up here. The right buffer length will equal, be X and then O, or O and then X? It'd be backwards, wouldn't it? No, it'd probably be 0X, because we're writing the number in from the buffer backwards, so this would be... We sent in AB12, this buffer would contain uh, 21BA and we would write AB12. Yeah, so we have to write just 0x as it's written left to right. Okay. Trying to get that straight in my head right quick. Print it, adds to it. Just trying to give a, a double check here. Okay, but yeah, we want to null terminate the string, then we want to call write with the string, um, which is the syscall wrappers, which I don't have. Oh yeah, I do. I do have that. Because I use it for put character. Forgot about that. So I want to write to 1, fd1, use our buffer here, since that's still pointing to the start of the memory. That's why I indexed with length. That's another reason why I indexed with length. And the size that we're going to write will be the length. So that's simple enough. Um, and when we're done with it, we can free the pointer finally. Free the however large the buffer is. Okay, and that's all good and well, but this is going to run into, if we use printf within the kernel, this is going to run into whatever we're currently using for malloc, and like the, uh, the head of the list and the virtual and physical address for malloc and everything that's already being used in the kernel. So I think this is probably why most operating systems should have a separate kernel malloc from a user land malloc, and I don't because I'm not a good programmer. So I'm going to have to set, set that up as well, but this all should be good. Assuming it is, the last thing I'm going to add to this file is either an enum or a couple defines just for the standard stuff. The standard stuff will add in, out, and error, even though I'm not using standard in and standard error right now. I might do it later if I actually set up better abstractions and streams and stuff. But we can just say, hey, technically we're going to standard out. It has syntax highlighting, but it's not the compiler built in, I don't think. Uh, but that's all right. It's a special case here in C. So yeah, we can write to standard out officially. That's good. I don't think I need to do anything else in this file. But yeah, I do need to add some, some malloc things to the kernel to have this dynamically allocate and work all right. So I will do that. I'm also going to assume some size constraints. So. I'm just going to do this before we actually print anything out, so I can use it as a test case here. Or here, <laughs> I could just include this in the printf as a test case, so we can do that down here. I guess I'll set it up before this stuff, because eventually I might want to convert this, and convert setting the color to using the terminal set color commands, so maybe I'll do it here. And we'll just say for eg printf calls. So the kernel stuff I'm going to set up is going to be the same things as um, these. No, <laughs> I got rid of it. Press enter first. Yeah, these these functions pretty much, or these variables, not functions. These variables pretty much. So the list head. I'm just going to add like because I don't have namespaces in C. I'm just going to prep in that with kernel. <laughs> Which is not great, but it, it works, so that's that's fine. 
Uh, these are 32-bit, I believe. And this is a malloc block T pointer. Okay, and that is fine. Uh, spacing, get rid of that. Okay. So this is not going to point to entry point or whatever we want to point it to. Malloc 4 files is loaded at some offset from 400,000 in hex currently, 4 megabytes approximately. Some point above that, after all the memory for the program is loaded, we have an offset right beyond that to where loaded programs can put dynamic memory allocations for malloc. So in the kernel, I don't want to overwrite that stuff. I'm just going to put it before 400k because I'm not using much memory. I think the only other major thing down below is like the physical memory map, and that's at 30k in hex or 50k, something like that. I think it's 30k, but um, it's definitely not at 400, but I can use an address lower like 200 or 300. I guess it depends how much we're going to be mallocking with printf and other things. Uh, in the future, I'm not sure right now. I'm just going to set this to 300 so I don't have paralysis fatigue trying to think of where to put it. <laughs> the physical address, we need to allocate a thing for that, so we'll allocate a block for that. And that's a uint32, so I will cast that as a return value, whether I need to or not. I think I probably do. And we'll just set this to 1 by default. We'll allocate a page. We, I would need to make this more robust <laughs> and, and, and complicated. To allocate more pages right now, I'm going to assume whatever you're using for malloc is just printf, and whatever you're printfing is hopefully going to be less than 4 kilobytes in size for the final string that you're printing out. But, so if you print out like a whole file's worth of characters, it would probably overrun this and need a different implementation. Uh, right now I'm just going to use one page, <laughs> so that's not too bad. Um, but if we get a page, I need to map it into memory. I need to map this physical address to this virtual address, so I will do that. And I'm not checking the return value, so I'm assuming it'll work. Which is not guaranteed, but they're both void pointers. I think physical comes first. But I can check that. And it's not. It's a virtual memory manager map page. Mal page, bad page. Can't get my keybinds. Physical and then virtual. Okay. So we will map 300,000 to wherever that physical address is. And then what I need to do, since it's malloc, we're going to be writing to it. So I need to set it as read-write or else we'll get a page fault when we boot. And that says, hey, you're writing to... <laughs> I'll have an error code too for this address. Um, especially if I try to set the, the list head stuff to that right now. So I can do this right now and you can see that error pop up, I guess. Kernel vert address. So if I try to set the, the values at this address through the malloc list head, so which is going to be, I don't know if this will tell me. No, it doesn't. Um, but we'll have a size, I think. We'll have free and we'll have next. And I'm getting that from a malloc implementation. For this block here, so yeah, size free and next. So this is going to be free, which is going to set a one for that. The size is going to be the page size, which is 4K, but subtracted from the size of the malloc block, the structure that we're allocating. Malloc block T. Since that's it, this that's sort of holds a metadata about the current chunk of memory that is being malloced. The metadata being the size and the if it's being used or not, if it's in use. Uh, there is no next one for this, but we can set these things. So if I if I try to do it right now, it's not going to work. Of course. What do you mean you didn't like S? Was it down here? It's pointer S. Or is it something else? 105. Expected expression. Oh, S++. Yeah, I need a semicolon, dude. Come on. And it says it's undeclared identifier. Hmm. That is an expression. <laughs> this is not an expression. Can I not do this within like a switch statement? I thought I could. 
I thought I could. Maybe because it's scoped differently, I can't do that, which would make sense. I haven't used switches too much, which is, you know, not the best, but that's all right. Does it work if I do that? It's scoped? No. Well, yeah, it is. Okay. And that I didn't name it right. Okay, so how do you do proper block scoping within a switch case? I don't remember. I think this is right. This break should work from breaking out of the switch, right? I wouldn't have to do, like, after this. I don't know. We'll see what happens. If it breaks, it breaks. And hopefully it breaks at this statement here, because that's what I called it. Um, kernel fizz address? No, this is kernel malloc physical address. And malloc virtual address. I'm just trying to show an error. I'm trying to make an error, and I can't even get to the runtime errors because I failed at compiling. Redefinition. Yeah, I don't need to say the type again. Is that it? Yay! We'll make it twice so the file table's not all janked up. All right, so this should give me a page fault for trying to write to location 300,000 because it is not readable writable for the page. We set the page that the present flag is set, but the readable writable flag is not. So I should get a page fault from that. Um, and I don't, but it does print hello a lot. Hello, 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 hello. <laughs> yeah, that should not have worked, <laughs> actually. Uh, but it did work, so okay. It's B8. So map, yeah, mapping the page here does not, I guess if it's a new entry, it will set read write for the entry, but that's on the page directory. The page table, I'm only setting present. So I figure it would be a read write error, but it's not. Um, okay, if I set this, if I do this before mapping the page, do I get an error? Because that's, I figure that would be bad, right? If I compile it first. If I don't map the page to an address, the, the computer should be like, what are you doing? Yeah, this is what I expected. <laughs> it's not mapped to an address, um, but I figure I would get like a read-write error anyway, but I didn't, so oh well. That's all right. But anyway, yeah, you, if you want to set values at a memory address, you're going to make sure that the page is mapped first. That's all I'm trying to, trying to say here. Um, but the other... The other variables down here, I do want to set sort of to start off, because if we're not calling a program, we want to be able to use malloc appropriately and have it work. So I'm going to do that um, by just setting these two, our kernel malloc variables. So easy enough. I can type, which I can't. I can never type. And this will be kernel total malloc pages. Okay. So now when we go down and we're actually calling a program with these, um, this is fine, but I need to restore the values back after we call the program. So setting that at 300,000 means we'll have one malloc linked list at 300,000 in memory, and we'll have another one at 400,000 plus something for any called program currently for our one process sort of that's running. So it should be okay. They shouldn't overrun each other, mess anything up, unless our kernel malloc goes beyond one megabyte in size and reaches into 400,000, then that's where the program is loaded. That would be bad, but assuming that doesn't happen, um, I'm just going to reset these after this program calls. I'll just do this. Um, go back. There we go. We'll just do that. We'll set them back here. And we'll see what happens now. Probably errors because I don't know what I'm doing, but... You know, will will it blend? That's the question. New foreground. Ooh, that's random text. That's good. Stuff still works. <laughs> but it should have printed out the test string, right? Should have hopefully printed that out. This is correct. 
So while I could compile this without setting readable writable, I did that when I was testing, so I feel like it's good if I do that anyway, <laughs> just to make sure. So I'm going to do that here after we map the page. I'm going to get the page for the virtual address. Um, and I'm going to set it as readable writable. So that page. Set PTE read write. Yeah. Uh, for malloc memory. Okay. So I don't think that'll change anything from it messing up, but I did want to make sure I had that in. Yeah. Well, it's printing garbage, but it's different garbage. Uh, this wouldn't matter if I declared it here. No, it wouldn't. But I would only need it one time if I declared that here and delete the other one. So now I'm trying to run a diff against what I did during testing in my head and <laughs> figure out why it's not working. All I'm doing is using print string once right here for the menu string. Well, no, sorry. Using it here for this. It's only printing a colon. It's not printing any of this, but just a colon, which is interesting. You know, is it printing this colon? Is it printing this one? <laughs> it's not adding any of uh, the other stuff. I can do that now because print because standard I/O has that defined. So there's that. Um, I think the other thing I did, yeah, the other thing I did was make these globals in here that I'm using. I made these static. I don't think that matters for this situation. But I did have them as static. Sometimes my compiler is weird with making with things being static and things not being static. It puts them in different areas. That didn't change anything, but okay, let's debug stuff. Where am I at? Standard I/O. I always end up debugging for three hours. That's just how these go. I guess I, I it doesn't matter, but I can set these to zero. That shouldn't matter. Initialize the buffer and the length to zero. It doesn't matter. Okay. No, that's what I have in my in my test. So something I messed up. That print string doesn't work. Something I messed up. What did I mess up? This this. We could see we could see what the issue is. Let's just print a simple number and see if that works or not. Let's just do printf debugging for everything. Well, the number works. Uh, does a string work? Mm, string doesn't work. Okay. Well, that's one thing. I did have issues with strings for some reason and only strings when testing. Why? I don't know. It was just being weird. This, I guess we can do a one-liner, not that it matters, but. And maybe some issue with the scoping here. Because that would go on. Do I have to do break here? I really don't know. No, that still breaks. Okay. Uh, I mean, if it's an issue with that, I can try to suss it out with this. Although I made that a character. Maybe it's adding a character to the UN8T buffer is wrong or something, and I shouldn't do that. Could be. That's why I was saying this was a little bit fragile, so there's no guarantee that it's going to work or not, which is not the best. But it's only with the percent %s, I know. Very frustrating. It's the same. The only thing that's different in my test setup where it does work in this one is that, I mean, I'm doing different strings that I'm printing, right? But I also don't have a switch case. Like I just have the if else ifs. So I could try that and see if it works, but I'll try to figure this out and be back in a, in a little bit. Okay. I found a little something here. Actually, I don't have any changes compared with 
you know, the test that I was running earlier in a test version of the OS, the testing branch, other than, you know, using a switch case here. Um, I did keep the character S up here for that pointer. I was testing with this because I had a I had a statement here when I was testing that says, you know, if we don't have a string here, if the string is pointing to null, then make it a literal string of null. So if I don't include that, then I have this output where we don't get anything. Um, and I might have also changed these two lines where just incrementing that. But if I do include that line, so I think it might be something with the compiler optimizing for size and like moving things around and being dumb, then uh, yeah, I get the testing line here that I have laid out. So I don't know why, which is great, but I, you know, I'm not, I'm not going crazy. I just don't know how to wrangle my compiler and do things the right way, I guess. Very buggy development, which is not great, but we can try this whole testing line here and see if it works. It's only with the percent %s as well. The numbers were fine. The character was fine. Um, it's just with the percent %s for some reason just messed everything up. It's only with the s. But yeah, this works. So uh, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, the whole point of making malloc over here was not to make things buggier, but <laughs> I mean, you could also just make a whole array. If it's too buggy for you and you don't like it, just make an array and see if that'll work. Just statically allocate it, whatever, on the call stack and uh, just write to that instead of doing malloc. But you will need you will need to like send chunks to writes if you have a large string or something that you're writing that overwrites this length. You'll need to check to see if you're going to write over that length, then just send up to that length to write, and then start at that. You know, keep going on that and that current posi at that current position. I can't talk <laughs> within the formatted string, and reset your index or length counter to zero for the next 1024 bytes, and just kind of chunk your input like that, right? Buffer your input. Um, but you know, the malloc thing right now is a little buggy. I'll try to improve the robustness over time, I guess. Uh, the main point of that though was to combine these two statements, right? So that we can do printf with control codes. And I won't need to explicitly say right here unless I want to. So if we just include this uh, at the start of here, And, well, we could have the strings be separate and they'd be concatenated, I think, but we'll just do this. So it should still print in the same place, three rows down, X is at the start, turn off the cursor, print this whole line, and then we shouldn't need to do this, because I have the control codes directly in the printf screen. So let's see if that works. And we'll make it a small screen just in case, but yeah, or just to check, um, it does work. So we can do control codes within here, yay. So I do want to sort of change printing in the kernel, although there's a fair few places to do that. And uh, particularly, I wanted to try out the control code for changing the foreground and background color and like replacing this color setup with that, you know? Although we have the default set, so I probably don't need these unless we're doing this. And then that could simplify the graphics header file by moving the colors outside of there because they don't need to be in there. They're in the terminal .h file now. And yeah, just kind of simplifying other printing and things uh, with printf and using control codes to not have explicit cursor variables everywhere like this stuff. I just wanted to show that even though it's buggy, you can dynamically allocate within printf and combine the control codes and it works at some basic level. So I'll continue with that train of thought. Um, my next recording session, which might be tomorrow. I'll see you in a second. All right, I'm back to continue this just for a little bit. Um, probably going to just see where we can swap some things from the print string or the clear screen or other things over to using printf and the control codes. Uh, just to test this right quick, instead of hard coding zero and three for the string, let's see if we can change it to some other thing some dynamic number just to make sure that that works. Uh, first and second args for that. X, let's do, well, let's do like five and 10. I did that before, right? So X position will be five, Y will be 10. And this is just in the kernel. And we'll see if it takes those numbers, converts them to a string, passes that string to the right syscall ultimately, and makes it work. 
for the terminal right, and it does. So that should be five and down 10. So that seems to be working. So that's good. Print string works. I guess we can try to change where printing happens in the kernel, try to simplify it a little bit. Um, I could try to do colors as well for the terminal. Um, anyway, that's just a printf string to make sure it works. We can get rid of that. Just comment it out. I might try to set these things, I guess. See if setting the colors works. So maybe we can try... We won't even have to deal with foreground and background color, hopefully. But I'll try it. I'll try printf. We'll do... What was it? Foreground? I don't remember. <laughs> I think it's fg for foreground. Yeah, it is foreground background. So FG in the number and then BG in the number, the BGs. Um, I also experimented with different compiler flags and like W error for making warnings into errors and W all. Um, and it turns out this isn't necessarily standard or supported, the slash E. So really I should be doing one B everywhere, but I like, I like the slash E. It looks really simple, so... <laughs> I guess I'm going to keep that, but that's not technically standardized or supported on everything, so oh well. We'll try FG. I'll do percent %D and BG percent %D, and we'll see what happens with just these colors right here. So foreground, all E's. Background will be all 2's. So this should be just converted from hex to decimal. So there's no reason to look for like a literal 0x and stuff. I, I don't know why I put that in there, but whatever. That's fine. Um, the 8-bit, I'm not sure. Because I'm taking 32-bit numbers. I mean, I could write that out, I guess, and only take like the lowest whatever bits that I'm doing for these. The lowest nibble, because <laughs> it's only 16 colors. Oh, it's 256, but I guess we'll see if that's the equivalent. Uh, clear the screen. We have clear screen escape. Which will clear the screen and also set the terminal driver, driver sort of, uh, you know, air quotes around that. <laughs> and it'll set the cursor X and Y in the terminal to 0, 0 to the top left automatically. And then the boot message... We should be able to just print the menu string either with a percent %s or just by itself. So by itself we'll just print the string. So we'll see if that looks okay. I guess the only other thing would be the cursor. Um, the menu string may have the dangling cursor on the end actually, so I might want to turn the cursor off. And then we'll print the string. And then when we print the prompt character we can turn it back on. So we won't have these explicit move cursor things if we do cursor on. Um, control code, escape code here. And we'll print the prompts. And that should be equivalent to these two lines. So the reason I'm leaving these commented out is so it breaks and I can, you know, re-put those in right quick, but... Put those back in if needed. So there we go, that's good, page fault. <laughs> so we're writing to 301,000, that's not good, I guess. Okay. I don't know why we'd be writing, why we would be writing to that address, but I guess we are. I'm not sure where it would be doing that. 3,000 is where it's set to begin. We're calling malloc within printf, but that was fine down here. You're saying it's not fine up here, maybe. Could be with these, because I haven't tried setting the colors yet. Maybe something's broken with that, so we can find out. Just got to start with bugs, you know. Always got to start with bugs. Yeah, it's converting the colors. So, <laughs> I guess the cursor position doesn't change either, but that's for printing after the prompt. So that makes sense, because we're still using cursor kernel cursor x and y. So that's cool that this stuff doesn't work though. <laughs> We're setting the foreground and background. I'll make those to-dos. That's fine. I haven't tested those like at all. So that's that's fine. That makes sense that it doesn't work. But this other stuff should should work and be okay. That should be all right. Uh, okay, that does replace the prompt. So 
remove cursor, we should be able to just turn it off when we press enter and it should move down. Maybe we print like a, a new line or something, but we'll go on to tokenize. Zero D is the same as carriage returns. So that would be smaller as well. Eight, I think backspace is also a slash B, isn't it? If I do man, I don't know if it has it within here. But it might. But it might not. I don't see it. Oh, there we go. Write a backspace character. Slash B. Okay. So I can see if that works with the slash B, because that would be easier to remember than a 0, 08. And I think that should work. If you're confused, there is ASCII, so I can look at it. And 0, 08 is BS, so yeah. 0, 08 is bullshit, <laughs> so we should be able to do that. So remove cursor, let's see. If I can do cursor off. Maybe that will work. That's if we press enter. And that's backspace handling. Here we have print character. I know the put C is not the right put C for C. Yeah, for, <laughs> for regular C standard life. Move cursor, it should be on. Like I'm using my put C in my standard IO dot headers is more like put character. It's just implicit and takes a character, but really put C would take in a file stream, which I'm writing the standard out. So I'm not sending it a file pointer. My put C kind of acts like put character. I might change that later. Probably should, or I should probably just rename it to put character. That might make more sense. Is put S the same way? No, put S just takes a string actually. The put character is the odd one out here. So maybe I'll, I'll leave it and change it later. But anyway, I just wanted to make that known. My put C is actually put char. Uh, backspace would be, we're moving X backwards. So I have a backspace, right? I have some other files open here. B3, do I have a backspace character control thing? I thought I set one up, but I don't remember. Yeah, I do. Uh, X just goes backwards. I wanted to make it do more stuff, but okay. X just goes back by one, which is what this is doing. So should be able to do that. I forgot if I put a semicolon on this one or not. I did. Okay. So that'll do a backspace. That'll do that. Then we want to print two spaces at the cursor. Then we want to move back two spaces. Okay. And that should be a full backspace. Visually, a full visual backspace. Uh, we can convert that to just one line here and hopefully that works. Backspace two spaces and then go back two spaces. Wait, I'm going to call it a visual backspace. And we'll just see if that works so far for printing stuff at the, uh, at the prompt or not. That was only like 10 lines of changes, right? Not too much so far. Okay, that looks good. D, I, R. Let's press backspace. Doesn't do anything. So that's good. Um, so I guess this B is not 0, 08 or something. Either that is not 0, 08 or this is not working because kernel cursor X we're not doing. That's why. <laughs> that's actually probably why. Kernel cursor X is being set at 0 at the top of this file down here. So yeah, we need to not have that as the check. Um, if they put something in, then the, the input length would be above 0, right? So actually what I could do is just get rid of that and have this be the end of this if. We'd go back in the command stream, we'd set it equal to null, and then we do the backspace. And this actually could be minus minus because this is happening anyway. 
but that might be more confusing. So by more confused, when I say that might be more confusing, I mean, I just got confused and I don't want to act like I know what I'm doing, but okay. So that backspace works. And DI is not a good thing. So printing out failure still prints at the top because it was set to zero, zero. Um, CLS should clear, but again, all the cursor variables aren't the same. <laughs> But it does print, and the backspace does do it does work. It just prints at the top now, because we haven't changed everywhere. But stuff still seems to be working. Just a little bit jank. That is okay. So input a command not found. Yeah, let's change this to print the failure message, and the cursor should be on by default. If the length is zero, so if they entered in nothing. It'll print at the right spot. If they enter in something, but it isn't right, it still takes DIR, so I should probably ha change a, a a length check on that, but just print DI, it's going to, yeah, it's not found. So basically, I'll just be looking wherever we're printing stuff. Um, file table will have to change, actually. This function will have to change. Uh, dot h and registers because I don't want to pass in specific uh, you know cursor variables anymore I think those are both header files I still need to change this stupid <laughs> graphics test I was waiting until I did more graphics things before I did that uh, that's okay can change the clear screen part clear screen escape and that'll set cursor variables so we don't need those anymore but yeah, I need to change the graphics test for non-1080p stuff. Um, we can make this CLI and halt. I haven't looked at most of this for a long time. So, <laughs> that's always good. But, you know, we can simplify things. This will set the cursors to zero, 0 implicitly, so we don't need to do that anymore. Shut down. Still need to do that for box. Uh, print new line is easy enough. We can do put C for each character or just print F for slash R slash N. Kill two lines with one stone. So this is going to be boring. This is just me, you know, writing the same thing but in less lines. <laughs> So, you know, that's probably just going to be the rest of this video. Maybe debugging the, the changing the colors, foreground and background to hopefully get that to work. Other than that, this video is just going to be probably simplifying kernel printing. So, you know, if this is boring and takes a while, I'm sorry. I'm just doing this before I go to bed as like a wind down kind of thing. But, uh, but yeah. Basically all I'm going to be doing here, just changing print stuff. Changing our print strings, getting rid of the cursor things. These I could technically just make one line. Oh, here's the change colors command too. Ooh. I guess that's fine. Print hex. Let's do a percent x in there. Get fancy with it. Actually, yeah, I could do that here. So slash r slash n foreground percent x. And then we can do the same for the background. That'll be BG, the BGs. That'll be the current colors. Those together. We'll have the new foreground background color as well. We're printing 0x and then the thing. Okay. Oh, because they're typing in. Yeah, the user's going to type in the color that they want to change to. I gotcha. This should concatenate. I shouldn't have to, you know, combine these. I just think it looks better visually if I combine them, but that's what I'm used to. Don't have to move the cursor. We might have to turn the cursor off when we're printing to not have it look weird. Uh, but we'll see how that turns out. If I go for the change colors command, we'll see how that turns out. 
Let's see the input character. Yeah, see here I actually added the, the 10 to begin with. I did that correctly. I do remove the cursor there. Okay, so maybe I move it on when we type and then remove it here. Hmm. So I guess maybe I should turn it off. That makes sense for header stuff. I'll do that. I'll do cursor off and then... I'll do cursor on when they are printing. When they are typing in. And then we can turn it off, print, and then turn it on. Okay, that makes sense. So it is kind of just one for one replacements, but it's more succinct. It just, I guess it's abstracted more. But I think it makes sense turning it off and turning it back on. That fixes 90% of the problems in IT anyway. It's true for my work and everywhere else I've, I've done work, so. It's just the one constant in the world. And slash zero D, we can do slash R. This is just duplicated code above for the other color. Pretty much. And then we turn it off again. Okay, it'll be turned on from the prompt anyway, but I guess if we're just printing it out, that makes sense. And then just ending it with a new line. Okay. Okay, what do we got so far? We got the change colors command. We don't have the print file table or anything, but we got change colors. Oh, which is not with a capital C. Yeah, we got change colors. Okay. I get one shade darker or lighter. And then that looks correct. Okay. We've got change font as well. Don't need to move the cursor. That's going to be automatic. I'll say error. Is that right? Yeah. Might have to turn the cursor off somewhere in these if the, you know, the stuff printed out looks weird. Font loaded. I should be able to do all this in like one, right? <laughs> or I can do that. Not need it. We have the width and the height. These could be integers. Um, this is all with spaces. Okay, width, height, space. Height would be percent D. Now it's looking more like idiomatic C with the standard live. You know, because you add your own standard live. <laughs> and then it looks better. Looks easier to type. Wow, who would have thought? So I might have to add, yeah, cursor off and on statements in places to make it look better without like dangling cursors at the end, but that's, that's fine. That's all fine. I could also move the new line print to like right when the prompt prints and wouldn't need this everywhere. Dangling new line everywhere, but that's, might be a future thing. That's sort of more yak shaving, I guess, more than I'm already doing, <laughs> at least. This one, I don't know. This one we might have to set and set it and forget it now. Save and restore. We'll have to save and restore the cursor. That's fine. We have 50 and 30, so we could just... Well, I don't know where the where the stuff currently is, though. Hmm. I don't have a save and restore, like, screen or variables command. That might be something to add later. That would probably be good. Hmm. Yeah, I'll mark that down. That would be good to have. To make... 
make a or make save restore screen yeah make save restore screen or terminal variables control code because i think the ansi i think the the vt100 or the vt220 has that it has like save restore screen codes or some terminal emulators respect some form of save restore screen codes um sorry goombario you're gonna disappear because of nintendo right now but <laughs> it's all right add sound things here Uh, but yeah, save or restore would be good to have later, I think. I think. File table not found an error. I'm also hoping this cuts down on the bytes that the kernel takes up a bit. I think it will, but not that much. Like, I don't think it'll go down a full sector, but maybe. You never know. It might. Allocating needed pages is a decimal. Pages slash r slash n. But it at least makes the code more succinct. I think it makes it read better, which is good. And we allocate to that address. That'll be another percent D, no, hex percent X. And then slash R slash N. Yeah, okay. So we're under 900 lines in the kernel. Like, that's good. That's good. See, all my code was just boilerplate. So I'm reducing that boilerplate by moving it someplace else <laughs> in the terminal. But it works. Works pretty well. We clear the screen and reset the cursors, but we have one function that does that now. Bam. Reset cursor position before going back. And we can do this here. This would be percent %d for the pages. Yeah. Okay, then free to address. This is a lot of repeated messaging, so that's not the best. That's okay. As long as I know what it's doing. And it reads a little better. And we got another new line. A lot of new lines. But they are your friend. We'll just put that there. I guess, yeah, if there wasn't the possibility of literal zeros and that I had to convert, I could just print the whole file as a string, and that would be fine because it would be malloc and printf, but we could have literal zeros that we need to convert, so I'm printing it a character at a time. Not the best for performance, but, you know, that may be something I want to look at again in the future. Like everything else, way too many things I want to look at in the future. I'm only one man. Sometimes I want to make clones, like to, to do stuff for me. That would be nice. But I think they would have like a worse time than I would because I'd be getting in my own way. So <laughs> that wouldn't be a good thing. I think one of me is probably way more than enough. I wouldn't be getting more work done. I'll put it that way. I would be getting the same work done even slower if that's even possible. Somehow. But just a thought experiment. There's no other printing. Okay, we're about at the end here. At least for the kernel. We did change the calculator, right? I think we did. So it would just be the editor that I would want to potentially change printing in. But I think the editor, I'll, I'll just leave as it is right now. I kind of want to make it more line-oriented anyway instead of character-oriented because it would be easier to deal with line-oriented data structures. For editing a line at a time, I think it would make logic simpler. But the editor, that's like, that'll be uh, different changes in the future. I have some bigger plans I want to do for, for the editor. It'll be more 
More changes. <laughs> More changes. This would be region X, I. This is just printing four things out. I'm tempted to put them all in one print F, but I don't think that'll work just due to the S map having eight bytes here. And I'm assuming four bytes in print F. So I would have to add, well, ideally I would have to add like length specifiers like LX or LLX for long, long. So that might be something. That's another thing I can add to print F. So that's good. That's more work for print F. <laughs> But I think if I just print them by default, even if these are 64-bit, but I don't want to just shove them on the stack and pass all these to printf in one line because of these being like 8 bytes. I think that'll mess up. So I'm going to separate these out, unfortunately. Uh, but just keep that in mind. I don't want to, but I'm going to. <laughs> it'll be region. It'll be base. I'll just have these look. Similar. Uh, they'll be printed on one line though. That doesn't end with a new line. So yeah, I'll put the space there. Base will be smap entry base address. And I'll have length. Length will be percent x. This is the S map entry length. And then we'll have type. I just did these all as hex. That's all right. And we switch on the type and print out the F. Print out the uh, the type. Available reserved ACPI reclaim NVS non volatile storage. I think memory in vars. There are a bit more types than these. These are only four. There's more in the in the actual spec for SMAP for ACPI. I don't know how many there is now, at least like 15 probably, but those will be later. <laughs> Just another thing I got to add to the list. Not meaning to be too boring during this part. I'm just, you know, it's, it's boring remote work. This isn't something you really want to talk over because there's nothing to say. It's just, eh, I don't know. I don't know how much I want to include. I, ideally, I do want to include like every single line of code change in these videos, but you know, then you just get stuff like this where it's like, is this really what people want to watch? Or maybe you just want to listen to monotone voice man talk in the background while you do other work or something, <laughs> which is fine. I don't really know what people watch these for exactly. This is an X, so. Uh, oh, that gets the last one here, and then it prints that out. Okay, so we could do, we could do this. Just copy that out here, and then this would be percent %x. And that should take care of that. I'm assuming all this is going to work without testing it, you know, which is not the best, but most of it should work. <laughs> It's max blocks, and we have used to reserve blocks. So that's the beauty of formatted strings. You can have potentially however many formats you want with however many variables. They're all just going to be on the stack in 32-bit. In 64-bit, again, they're not going to be. But we'll have to make a 64-bit printf one day, and that day is not today. But that'll be fun. <laughs> I really do think it's just adding like a counter for which argument you're on. So if we had something with two arguments, max and used blocks, we'd have argument number zero or one or whatever we, on, whatever we want to call it. Argument number one and argument number two, kind of like argc and argv. And then we'd say, okay, we're doing sys5abi calling convention because we're on Unix or something. So we'd say, okay, we're taking our argument from, I think it's rdx is the first one, and then... So RDX and then RDI and then RSI. It's something like that. I think it, no, it might be RDI, then RSI, then RDX. But you take, if this was, you know, first on the stack, you'd take it from RDI and inline assembly. Then used blocks would be an RSI, you know, so on and so forth. And that's assuming they take up the eight bytes on the stack. So hopefully they all do and are sign extended. 
which they should be, because the stack pointer, the stack address size would be eight bytes. So I think they should be. Uh, free or available, this is going to be present D as well. So I don't think it'll actually, I don't think it would be actually too bad to do a 64-bit printf. It's just a little bit more work depending on the calling convention. So you might have some if defs depending on if you set environment variables for whatever calling convention you want to use or whatever OS you're under to assume the calling convention for. Um, this is just two new lines. If that makes sense. I kind of said that those last few sentences in a weird way. So, But this would be the memory and bytes. These would be the blocks. So kernel, if this all works, the kernel is shrunk, I don't know, 70 odd lines. So that's pretty good. That's not quite 10%, but it's a good amount. The other stuff isn't, of course. Uh, print reg and print directory, print file table, rather, aren't right. But print memory map should be, yeah, that should be correct. And that looks, I think, the same. So, except for the total memory and bytes, that is not correct. <laughs> so maybe percent %x is messed up. Because that is not correct for some reason. And that could be something to do with the uh, the 64 byte, you know, values here. Maybe that's the issue. It shouldn't be empty. I'll just I'll just say that. <laughs> it shouldn't be empty at all. It does add the 0 and x. So I'm taking an unsigned integer, send, sending 16 as the base and false, so it's not going to be signed. Uh, but yeah, I'm doing the integer as, as a 4 bytes and not 8 bytes. That might be the issue. I'm assuming it's mod 16. It should be Fs for all of these, right? It should just be all Fs for that number. It's not going to be negative because we're not going to have a sign. That's going to be false. And it should add it to the buffer. So what is the issue there? Oh, it's probably because of this. Here, this is an N. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's an N. It's an int, as in it is a signed number. And if it's too big, it would have overflow and integer. Signed overflow is undefined, so it probably doesn't know what to do. It's given blanks or it's just ending early or zeros or something. So yeah, that would not be good. So let's have a uint 32t. Call it h, I guess. And I guess if base is greater than 10, I don't I don't know. This is I don't like adding too many weird edge cases here, but that's so I'm not sure. I'm also taking in a signed integer, so this wouldn't work anyway. Maybe I do need two separate things. <laughs> one for hex and one for, a, for decimal. I can do that. Also, this says print a string. No, print a print an, print a decimal integer. Integer. We'll just do this. This is fine. It's not great, but it's it's fine. <laughs> I don't know. Now I'm like, I don't want to have two different functions, but how do I make this work for two? We would just do this code within one or the other. Eh, I guess, but this would this can't be an int. I could pass it in as unsigned and then cast it as signed, and maybe that would be okay. Maybe that would be okay. Or I could just do two separate functions. But I wouldn't have a sign for int, and I wouldn't really have a base if it were just doing hex, so. But then if I'm doing this, then I don't need this one, and I don't need a base, so it's... Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. That's okay. That one will leave... We'll make a uint32t in equals num. Still, I guess we'll still copy the digits. I'm repeating myself, not not repeating myself, so not great, uh, but that's okay. As long as it works, we can worry about making it better later. As long as it works, that's the important part. That could be why the percent %x wasn't working for setting the colors. Now that I think about it, it could have been over the over the halfway point as a signed integer and would have 
had undefined overflow or something. That makes sense. If that was the reason why, and I, I think it would be. Because the halfway point would be 7 in all Fs when the top bit is not set. And then all E's would be above that point. So yeah, that, that does make sense. All E's or all D's for the foreground color would have would have set that off. Uh, this can be an I because it's only ever going up to like 16. That's okay. Uh, yeah, we'll just make sure we can have an unsigned for a hex. And then when we go to percent %H down here, we'll do this. And we won't have to pass in the base or sign yes or no. We can do that. Okay. And then we can see if that works. And it doesn't because I don't know what I'm doing. Because I don't have a base set yet. I don't have a base set in here, dude. This would be 16. Hard-coded, which is not great. But whatever makes her work. Hey, there we go. Yep, it was signed. That, that's the issue. Well, we can print hex numbers now, so that's good to know. <laughs> hex numbers above 7 FFF. FFF. F. -f, -f, -f <laughs> 7 Fs. 7 and 7 Fs. And I can check right quick if the other thing, if this works now. I like that the to-do's in red, that's a nice touch. I like that a lot. <laughs> Let's see. Oh no, it still doesn't like it. Okay, well, we'll have to worry about that later. Could be because these are over the 32-bit limit as well. So what if I do X for that? What if we make those hex so it's unsigned? It still doesn't like it. Okay, I'm not going to worry about that for now then. I will look into it because I'm curious why it doesn't work. I did undo one too many times. Uh, yeah, I am curious why that doesn't work, but I can look into that later. So the other, the other stuff does work. We can, pr we can print hexadecimal numbers. I'm talking too much. I'll make these 0 and 3 so at least it at least stays on the screen. So we can prove that the hex number still prints there as well. X, A, B, 1, 2. Okay, cool. So the other things would be print file table and print registers. This has been about 40 minutes, so I don't know if I want to keep doing that. Maybe I do. And we'd have to change other things as well, I think. But that should be all that we need to change for the most part in the kernel. Other than the color stuff. So I do need to change the colors. I need to make sure change colors works as well. But I think it does. Um, it just doesn't set the foreground and background color, right? Does it change colors? Yeah, here. This sets user graphics info. But this doesn't set in the terminal. So that's something I probably should do. Change to make, uh, change to use terminal control codes to change foreground, background, color. When debugged. Okay. Yeah, I'll just have it be debugged. <laughs> I'm really, I'm, I'm kind of sad that that didn't work. Is print file table, this isn't like a big file, is it? I don't think it is. It's only 85 lines. We could do this right quick, right fast. Print the heading. Yeah, let's print the heading, dude. And I don't have to pass in cursor X and Y to these things anymore because they'll be implicit. Ooh. So we can use technically the same cursor positioning in whatever file that calls these printf functions. Now that's pretty handy. I do like that. I need to change this from being hard-coded. That's not good. That should not be 1,000 hard-coded. That is a no-no. It's bad code. Is that just two blanks? Okay. Now I'm just going to be wanting to use printf everywhere that I don't need to, like in C in general outside of this, because of all this. But I will get hopefully more intimately familiar with uh, standard I.O. functions and, and uses, which I think that's good overall. That's probably good overall.
That one we can just print a space, or we can just print nine blanks. That would make more sense than doing this like in a loop nine times, right? Come on now. That will do. This could actually be. No, never mind. I was going to say if we had a type or something, and I could do percent %s and then do this. But I can't because it's not it's not null terminated multiple times within the the file table record. Otherwise, we could do that. But it's not set up as strings, so we have to kind of read it a character at a time still. Pretty lame, but that's all right. This would be percent %x for hex num. That's fine. Looks a little weird, but that's fine. Six blanks. Yeah, I need to make this better. If if I had written this better, I could probably just do one whole, one or two overall printf statements just for everything like separated out. But I need an actual better like file table record format or better file system anyway. I'm still thinking over that. <laughs> what exactly do I want in like a file pointer structure that I pass around for open files and stuff? I'm not exactly sure yet. How I want that laid out. I'm close, but not exactly sure. 11 blanks, huh? That's a big one. 11. And this print F for hex num and the hex nums before anyway, like these are duplicated. You know, this could probably be not duplicated. With like pre-incrementing or decrementing or something, putting it all in one string, that could probably happen. But it's not right now, that's okay. Okay, is that a changed print file table? We'll see if it works. Probably doesn't. Um, implicit declaration, where is it? Oh, the editor doesn't have it. Ooh. Is that only in the editor? Is that only one place? Or is it more than one place? I forgot the editor called it for loading a file. Uh, what happens if I just get rid of that? <laughs> we only call it the one time, so... We don't call it more than once. Does it work? Uh, it doesn't like it. Oh, the editor probably doesn't have standard I.O. No, that's why. There we go. We'll just blow it up the editor a bit. And the kernel doesn't like it either, of course, because I forgot to change that. Well, I was going to change it, just haven't yet. Okay, that would be changed now. And yeah, we're already in here, don't need to edit it again. Okay, silence the warnings. Uh, that mostly prints okay. These are only one digit, so my only issue is that I'm not padding it out. Yeah, I don't have a pad function inside of the, the print hex, so I can add that. It's in standard IO. That'll be in this function. <laughs> so we'll have like if num or n at this point. If n is less than 16, then we'll have padding. In my language at work, in RPG, you could... One thing it might have over other languages is I could do this. Well, I can't instantiate it on the same line, but... I'm wondering if I can do this. Can I just set this equal to the result of an expression and this will be tr true or false by default? Because in my, in my language at work, I can do that. Okay, so C lets you do that. All right, that's cool. I like that. That's really cool. That makes things easier. Well, simpler. Simple is not easy. So I'm not, I'm adding a zero x in this code down here. I could probably add that within the hex function. Maybe, maybe that would make more sense doing it up here. Sorry, up here. <laughs> Before I print it out, so we'll do that. We'll add the prefix and if we want to add a padding byte, then we'll just do that again. And I forgot that had a new line attached. That's all right. 
Add padding zero. Okay, because that's a bool, that should work. So we'll see. Oh, that's not good. Is it because I had an issue when I did make the first time? No, it just doesn't like it. Uh, okay. Is it because I'm doing this? Maybe. Um, well, I guess I could do it like this, right? <laughs> this is a terrible way to program. Oh my god. You can tell I'm tired. I'm doing things even worse than usual, which is... Which is great. It could be an issue that's like, stuff's being weird, like it was with strings before, with percent %s. It could just be being weird. Because I can't type anything in there now. Whatever, dude. We'll just do it. We'll do it the lame way. Okay. Is the lame way going to work? No. Okay. It's something else then. Uh, is it because I took the zero X off from here and now it just doesn't like me? Maybe. We'll try adding it back. My compiler does not like me. It's very nice. Something's weird with these switch statements. It just doesn't like it. Yeah, that were Okay, it's, yeah, something with the switch statement just messes everything up if I don't have it just exactly right. So I gotta, I gotta look into that and debug it. But the hex does print. <laughs> uh, memory map prints. Uh, okay, so directory prints now. There we go. It's got the padding bytes. I do really want to be fancy with it though, so I'm annoyed that that pad did not work. Can I not? Can I really not set it like here? Can I not do this? I would like to. No, that works. Okay, do I need the true false? Can I just set it to the result of the expression? This is how I, I find out how to optimize my syntax. That works. And what if we just do that? Instantiate it. Definition is declaration. Yeah, okay. X printing works now. Uh, file table has changed. What else was the print registers, right? Yeah, is that going to be like a bunch of work? Maybe, maybe not. That would be the last thing in the kernel is why I'm thinking about it. I don't think there's any other print things in the kernel that would be needed. I don't think. Oh, I don't have standard I.O. in the other one either. Ooh, probably should do that. Just in case. Because we're using functions from that. Kernel is what? I can't read. B1. Okay. Let's just get rid of these things. Reg string looks, I guess, all right. Print reg heading. I do need to make this better. <laughs> I set these to do's here forever ago, man. I'm not even doing these yet. Okay, so print x would be percent x. X num. Reg two is a. I could just set it in the string, right? That would be easier. Like what a this is new line. So this is all I'm doing. I don't need a slash zero. That's a, that's added automatically. So it would just be this as a string. And that would be here and then we'd print the hex number. So it would really just be this. Oops. 
for DX, then I wouldn't have to do that. I'll just call it print string for DX. And then we would just do that for all of these, right? So I'm printing A with the string, and then I'm printing AX, which would be this hex number. So this is a lot of, yeah, this will really cut down the lines of code. That's good. Assuming it works, of course, but it should. My face is probably covering that. Move that up there. This will be CX. This is SI. And DI. And CS. I. Miami. No. CS. So it's still a lot of duplication, but it's a bit less. So a bit less is good. This is DS. I was adding the other the other underscores, the double underscores, the double min, the dunder mifflins, the dunder methods, the dunder heads. That's what they call them, right? You know, Python programmers. No. <laughs> Well, C programmers are also dunderheads, so just, just remember that before you get too much hot air in your dunderhead. No, don't erase that. Erase that. Okay, SS. And is that it? Oh, and then... We don't need to reset. We we already we already did that. And we just end with a new line. We just end with a new line. Okay, well that's a bit under 100 lines now. 71. So it's a lot simpler, but then yeah. Hopefully it's easier to I don't need this anymore or these. I guess we'll have hex them. <laughs> That'll be fine. I'll instantiate that. And we do need to make them yeah, 32 bit. So, and we could do like EDX and stuff. These are the 16-bit ones. I guess we could do that now. 32-bit. Like, that's fine. Those are technically... We can make them all E's. I would get rid of that to-do. That's one to-do I can fix. At the end of this now, probably also three-hour long video that I didn't want to make three hours. <laughs> Ah, oh, such is life. Just print E before everything. E E S. No, no, these will be. Sorry, the segment registers aren't aren't prefixed, and the segment registers I think are still sixteen bit actually, but that's fine. Um, this is an S as well. Okay. So that'll be thirty two bit. And we could print out the flags. I'm not doing that, though. That's all right. We'll see if that works. Oh, it does not work. Too many arguments. Yep, and the kernel. It's just a warning, though. You can pass stuff on the stack. It just says you probably shouldn't do that. But you can definitely pass stuff on the stack. <laughs> it's just a warning. Unless you make the warnings into errors, and then it wouldn't be good. Invalid operand. So why is it moving moving EDX and A? That's still fine. Oh, I did move word. Yeah, don't don't move word. Need to make it move long. Move W. Let's make move L. There we go. Just do a find and replace for that bad boy. And there is no ECS because uh, I forgot one. Yep. And EDS. Those don't exist. Those aren't segment registers, you crazy. That doesn't boot because you messed up making the thing three times. Because you crazy. That one does. 
That one does work. Okay, so we should have the commands ready. That one works. Doesn't print the heading, but you know, it's, it's trying. <laughs> we do get the full 32-bit values. So it mostly works, mostly works. Thought I was printing over here. Oh, I'm not printing the heading anymore. Yeah, that's probably why it doesn't print the heading anymore. Probably because I'm not printing it. <laughs> that would make sense. Yeah, let's actually do that, right? That would be good. And some things weren't, you know, padded out correctly to deal with 32-bit, but and that at least looks a little bit better. Yeah, these have one less letter, so we need one more space. And that's just, you know, it's, it's whatever. One more space, one more space, one more space, one more space. So yeah, one more space, a left pad here. Centering the div there, that's all front-end development is anyway. Technically, I'm front-end developing, right? I'm making a UI. Except these are one too many spaces, but they're consistent, and that's all that matters. So I'm going to leave it like that <laughs> and make people with OCD angry that I'm one space off. That's all right. But okay, that's all I really wanted to do. That's more than I really wanted to do, but I fixed the other things, kind of. I, pr I fixed hex printing. I did not fix printing the colors and changing the colors with control codes. So I'm going to debug that. And I might add that on as a little extra, <laughs> again, to the end of this video. But that might be all I'm doing for making printf work with control codes. I think that would be the last thing I do. I'm not going to mess with the editor at all. So loading stuff in the editor is going to be a little bit jank. Um, just because the file table is going to print in a weird place. <laughs> I guess I could reset the, the terminal variables when I call a program to be 0, 0 instead of after I call the program with the clear screen control code thing. Um, that might fix that a little bit, or I'd have to re- well, I'd have to know what I'm calling and reset it anyway, so I don't know. It'll still work. Um, it's just a little jank when you see the load file. So other than that, stuff is, is pretty decent. Calculator works, and we can, we can print stuff out, we can still divide by zero and have it handled. Um, we can still make files. And print them out. So that's all good. We can still rename them. Yeah, and delete. And we're good. So yeah, okay. So I'm going to debug control codes for setting foreground and background color and see if we can't change the kernel at the top here to set these things and just have the kernel all be converted to printf stuff. And I didn't test the the change font command, that I didn't test. So is it just change font? Because I have to enter something in. And we have, what do we have? Test font. Okay, I mean, it doesn't move the cursor correctly, but it does load it. And clearing the screen does work. So, okay, change font technically I'll say works. We'll, we'll smudge that out there. Um, but I'm going to work on debugging this stuff. I'll be back in my time, maybe again tomorrow, depending. Hey, I'm actually back tonight because I looked at it and it only took me like three minutes to debug or however long the clock says. Who's running the clock? Who cares? Who cares? So I have like three changes though. So in the kernel, the reason this wasn't working was because it, it was this. And you know, as the message says, I need to do that. Um, if it's, if there's not a semicolon, which is the end of the control code, the whole escape sequence here, then, uh, printf, well, write, the terminal write function will be searching forever for the semicolon, which means, yeah, if it keeps searching forever, eventually it reaches the next, the next page of memory offset from 300,000 up here. Uh, the next page would be 301,000 in hex, because that's 4k away from 300,000 in hex. And that page isn't mapped into memory, so we get that page fault. Uh, yeah, we don't want it to search forever. Probably should have safeguards in the terminal driver for that anyway, but that's something later maybe. Uh, but yeah, you add the semicolons and it actually does set the colors correctly. It actually does. At least on boot. Well, actually it would have if I didn't have another change I had to make, but... You'll see that in a second. I'll just, you know, you boot up and it works, right? <laughs> 
for the colors. So and the other change was in uh, terminal right here. Let's get rid of this for a second. So when we set the foreground color, we go through, you know, we convert it. We have the A minus 10 over there, and that does work, actually, which is cool. Uh, for the background color, this was, I just copied the line. <laughs> so this was the foreground color. So that just sets the foreground color twice. And the background color did not change, so it was just black. Um, it was zero. But if you do that, it actually changes the background color, and it works. So that's good. I just miss very obvious things, I think. Um, oh, the other, I mean, I made these percent %x and not percent %d, so, and also I'm using, since I'm using convert color here, we'll surround these, we'll wrap these to convert for the current bit depth and uh, RGB values and everything. RGB offsets and masks that are, whatever, I don't even remember what it was. Yeah, VBE mode, Visa BIOS extensions. Sets the RGB masks and everything within the color byte, so. Convert color takes all that into account, and it's a very simple function, but that's in graphics.h. Not that people wouldn't have seen it, but they might not have seen it. That's at the bottom here. That just takes in our bits per pixel and our linear RGB mask sizes and field, position, field positions. Field positions are just ORed together because it makes up one byte. And then the mask sizes are converted. One shifted left by the mask size minus one over 255. That just converts it, but um, but yeah, we'll just convert the colors there, and that seems to work. I guess I could try it though with an 8 bit to make sure we're still in matrix mode. Uh, yeah, and we are, so yeah, we're good. Matrix green screen mode, you know, my work mode basically. Good old AS400. Um, the other thing was in change colors. Yeah, over here. Did I put new down here? I did. So the only other thing I did and change colors, I think, yeah, the only other thing I did was just actually change right here. Set, set the control code again to change the foreground and background colors. And I am going to keep, for now, I'm going to keep the user graphics info stuff. These should be converted as well, actually. It was working because I was doing 32-bit. So actually, I would have missed that. So that's good to catch. But I am going to keep the user graphics info settings right now, just in case the user wants to interrogate this without needing extra code in the terminal to put those somewhere in memory that we can then interrogate later. So, so we should be able to change the colors. Implicit declaration of convert. Convert what, my dude? Convert the color. The American color. The British color has some more U's in it, you know. I don't I don't speak that. I only speak American. We don't we don't type that way over here. But we should be able to do Um that was just checking if the file table was messed up and it was. We should be able to change colors now. At runtime and everything that was accessible from the kernel uh should be accessible now. So Foreground will make a little bit lighter. Background will make a bit lighter. And there we go. So the colors now change. We can do hot dog colors, right? It was a uh, was red on yellow, or was it yellow on red? We could try yellow on red. The foreground would be R and G, but not B, or would it be G and B? I don't remember. Does R and G give yellow? <laughs> We're about to find out. Background would be red. Yeah, it does. <laughs> oh, it burns my eyes. I forgot about that. That's I've made that joke twice now, and it's a terrible joke. But yeah, anyway, just we got I got the colors debugged and working, so I wanted to add that in. So we're it should be done with right now for messing with control codes with printf. It does work. Some other places we could change would be the editor, but that would be more involved, and I want to do other editor changes in the future anyway. So next video. For another small thing, while I'm procrastinating the full file system changes, is uh, <laughs> I, I think I'm going to add for the next video when we call a program like the calculator, the editor. I think I want to add the argc argv stuff here, you know, or how I like to do it in actual buffer because it makes more sense semantically what you're doing. You know, I want to add this stuff in, right? So I think I will do that. I'll just add a couple variables to the kernel here to hold the argument count and a vector of strings, and the strings will be basically what is, let me 
undo that for now. Um, let's do this. Four percent RV as input parameters to call a program. So we'll do that. So I think I'll add a couple variables for these to this kernel and we'll fill those out. So the arg the arg C will just be a zero. It'll start at zero and then increment. Well we could start it at one and then arg arg V offset zero would be a string holding the current program name. I think that's how it works in Unix, right? So we could do that. Um, but we'll have something that increments for each token that's going to be on the command line when you type something in. Like for the rename command, you type in a file name and then the second file name. So argc for that would be three or two if it's a zero offset. I don't know. I'll think about which one I want to do. But then argv would hold three strings, the program name and then the first file name and then the second file name, just for an example, conceptual example. So I think I might try to do something like that because that seems kind of cool. And then uh, the first little editor change I can do would be part of that video where if we pass in a name on the command line, then the editor can, I guess, check what file type it is. And if it's a text file, load the text editor. If it's a bin file, load the bin editor. But we won't have to go to the file table and load it explicitly within the editor if we pass it on the command line. That may mean I have to add some keybinds to load and make the editor better or maybe i'll put that off to later but we can pass something on the command line the editor can load it and run it kind of like you know you call your editor with a file and it loads it otherwise if you call it with nothing or it's a new file then it loads you know an empty file um and it didn't save it that's good so i can do something like that if you call it without any flags on the command line without a file name then it'll just load up a new file like it currently does for a new one. Um, so yeah, I think that will hopefully be small changes. <laughs> hopefully not take me a couple hours. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll do that on the next one. Hopefully that's interesting. I'll try to work out some plans to uh, get the file system after that, maybe, if I don't procrastinate that too much with editing and other things. So yeah, hopefully you want to see it. If not, that's fine too, but... Um, at least as far as this video is concerned, thank you for watching. I do appreciate it, and I will see you on the next one. Cheers for Agua.